This is Kage with Dragon Quest Tech coming at you again. Today we're going to go over a bunch of different topics. We're going to touch on the new content coming out soon. We're going to touch on the state of the game. Even get into monetization a bit for this game and, and my thoughts on it. Which are going to be a spoiler alert. They're pretty much going to be the same as everybody else. I mean, uh, where to begin... I think we'll start right with the monetization because that's kind of a strong topic right now is this game isn't really doesn't grasp enough people in terms of of spending power i mean we've seen some preliminary reports from some external sites in terms of the revenue this game gets and it's not bad but at the same time it, it sucks because we don't know what what the threshold is like do, do they need to make this much money to keep the lights on a year from now is, is it okay if they're somewhere down here we don't really we don't really know and those numbers are never going to be you know discussed with us in fact to be honest if if more companies were like we needed to make x to keep the game going they'd probably find a way to get x from from the players from the player base itself they you know but Unfortunately, in, in this, these type of games and this, you know, how these work, you never know what X is. She'll never get told what X is. You'll never even get told the actual Y as to what happened to the game. You'll, you'll get some PR speak in that regards if it ever does shut down. And then, you know, three more games of a similar nature will appear. Well, there's, there's a bunch of them coming out now. Dragon Quest isn't exactly the, the strongest IP. In, in the area itself, you know, in terms of what the Western market, more of an Eastern market, I mean, you're not going to be able to go out to a shop and, and find a lot of Dragon Quest stuff. It's just it's not going to happen. Even in an anime specialty store, you'll you'll be lucky if you, you know, you find one or two things here or there. You will get Dragon Ball, One Piece, other things of that nature. Even some Bleach stuff is still circulating, even though that show's been kind of stagnant for years now, but... Yeah, in terms of monetization, I mean, it's... You look over these gem packs, you look over what they could do in terms of... of everything here, and it's just... I don't, I don't know. It, it's, it's, um, it, it's a tough scenario. I mean, yeah, people have touched over with, with gem pack D, where it's, you know, $24, and you end up having to buy another pack to get, to get the 25 It's... I get, I get why they do it. It's more of a psychological thing in terms of you buy, you buy the D pack, you go back, you buy another pack. Well, for the dollar, well now you, you've committed to doing two quick purchases, and you're more likely to to spend more again or in rapid succession. It's, it's how they, you know, they monetize off people. It, it happens. It's, it also throws you through a loop when. You know, you could easily lose track of spending, you can get double charged. There's a lot of things that could happen in these type of games and scenarios, so... It's just better if they can make it to where you only have to charge once to get what you want. And hopefully they decide to do that, because, I mean, again... You want to get a paid banner, you, you buy the $24 pack, you gotta buy a dollar. It sucks. You know, I've seen it before, they know what they're doing with it, It's it's not... It's a little like, oh, we didn't know. No, no, bullshit. You know what you're doing. You, you know, you have people who, who come up with these numbers, with these figures. They sit down. They they know how to, to play the game. In terms of Gym Pack F, Gym Pack F is always going to be your best bang for your buck. Highest highest return. It's just, yeah. You, you want this Gym Pack. You want this Gym Pack in spades. But, again, deals... I like to see at least once a month where they do the $80 pack times two, essentially. You get, you know, you'll get like 20, 20, 22, 23,000 gems for 80 bucks. You're going to get everybody who normally spends it, no problem, yeah. You're also going to get people who normally wouldn't spend that because they they go, okay, well, this is some value to it. This this has some, I can I can, you know... I could potentially do almost a full stamp with with that. And that would kind of solve the other thing of trying to promote people wanting to go for a full stamp. You you would have 
a decent amount of people who would buy that. And then, you know, so in that regards, that would be a really great method to, to monetize the game. <sighs> the other things are, and I'm a bad example of this, because, I mean, I'll, I'll admit, some of these packs suck, even though, <laughs> well, you know, I bought them all, so I don't got too much room to talk, but I feel like there could be, like, more little packs, like... Even like the dollar or five dollar ones for people. Back when they started this game, it was a really good one dollar pack with a lot of gold, a lot of value, got people to bite. And then those type of deals just, you know, faded into the ether. It's like it was, I don't know, for whatever reason, they they did it once. Maybe it was preset to the game, you know, because Japan had it, but you never saw anything else similar to that. And supposedly there's deals down the road, there's supposed to stuff to happen, but it's just money they left on the table because if you were to do another just a straight five dollar pack or something with a couple of little goodies you know or something of that nature you get some gold in there get some rank up materials i mean e even you know heck even awakening crystals even if you did like you know little things to get towards awakening crystal bundles you probably get people in that regard people who are you know short a couple to get a unit they, they want to awaken up even further. I mean, there's just things you could do here. Unfortunately, though, I feel like it's... The people who are going to give you this advice, the best advice, are the ones who actually play the game. I mean, they just... you got to put yourselves in the position of a player. You can't be that suit beam counter who just, you know, looks at the best, best way to do things. Because that guy is never going to sit down. He's never going to play these games. He's never going to do anything. This is why... You know, when Chase was beating himself up, apologizing for the video, I'm like, well, for his monetization video, it's, he's got every right. I mean, he's got more experience than the people who come up with these figures. Now, is his, his ideas or my ideas going to make the most money for the company? Probably not. Is it going to make more money, though? Yeah. You know, it's not going to maximize. I'll, I'll be honest. I, you know, I don't know anything about the best ways to do that in terms of what you know how to bleed out the most money per person but if you can turn another like even five percent of your audience into spenders isn't that a good thing i mean don't you want to have more people who are willing to put down a couple of bucks and and support the game overall long term than just relying on the same pool and hoping they stick with it because a lot of times they don't unless the game really catches on or there's some other there's some other reason for it. You know, there's, you've got a couple games out there that have gotten some good popularity and, and some longevity to them, but their actual reasons for why those things occurred are, you know, either a really strong IP, which we don't have in this case, or dang, Dragon Quest is kind of middle of the road out here, or... You know, people were committed, the game stayed up long enough, and now it's like you can't separate a five-year-long player from that game. That person's not going to leave at that point. That person's got invested for long-term, but unfortunately a lot of these games don't make it to that mark. So, in that regards, just like to see some other packs, even if you know, it's just not testing the waters, even throwing out some polls on Twitter or something, you know, picking people's brains, asking them, a little bit more in that regard, you know, testing out and just giving it a go. I mean, I like the fact that you guys are slowly branching out with more of these packs, but I don't know if these packs were already preset and Japan got them, or if these are things that were tailored for us. So it's it's hard to say in that regard. But okay, moving on, moving on. We have some interesting news here in terms of. The update coming. So, in terms of what we have coming here with the story content, that's it's, it's going to be coming down the road very soon. If you haven't already taken advantage of the the stam the stam event, there's there's just a lot of things you should have been farming. I probably should have thrown out a video giving my my take on what to farm too. I know it's really late at this point, but I I was well grinding out my stuff, finishing up my box. So, yeah, I was a little selfish in that regard, but. Eh. Becca, this is me we're talking about here. Let's, let's be honest, folks. The new story is going to be coming out. We are going to have a lot of units, a lot of stuff to push onto. You know, leaderboards are going to shift. Things are going to get crazy. You know, essentially, if you have some extra stand left, you know, uh, items to replenish, 
that's going to be a time to start popping them, start working on new units, and to start ranking up everything if, if you care about that. If you don't, essentially just work on your core team, work on clearing content, and we could potentially have Pissarro tomorrow. It, it's... I mean, I, I thought Dread Dragon was going to come down the pipeline, and he did. I feel like we could get another mix-up here with the lineup, just how things are going. But at the same time, it's weird because we're looking at... Well, if we do get a new banner tomorrow, we'll have like four up. So we'll have Dragon Lord, we'll have Dread Dragon, we'll have Zoma. You know, we have the regular scout, and then we'll have whatever else they throw up on us. Now... Potentially, you know, we should have Alana. She should be coming out. That's, you know, great. You know, get a copy of her if you need it. Well, you know, it's about, you know, it's not safe for that unit. But, I mean, I think Fisaro's the next one. I, I really, I really do. Because, I mean, the other ones aren't really there to, you know. One's, one's a catch-up mechanic. One's sticking around because if you can max awaken him over a long period of time, go for it. But otherwise, you know, Zoma, Max Awaken, Dragon Lord, if you get an extra level or two on them, great. But these aren't really the the main banners here. This isn't really so. Hopefully, and Dread Dragon, he's in the same boat. Just if you can get him, great. I mean, he's there for a minute and he'll be gone. And that'll be that. So hopefully, I think we're gonna get Fisaro and then the other two, you know, Curiel, whatever his name is, the uh, well, boy who can't get the girl. And the girl who just can't catch a break for being a good unit, they should either be out a week after Pissarro or, you know, two weeks or we'll see. But, I don't know, my gut tells me we're going to get him tomorrow. Could be fantastically fucking wrong on it, but, well, if we get him tomorrow, that's going to be fun. It's going to get crazy, folks. It's going to get crazy, because you're going to have him out. We will have the arena coming Hopefully tomorrow, well, potentially tomorrow, or, or later today. You know. There's been talk that the, what's it called, that the actual update got pushed back a minute. I don't, let me see what's going on here. Let's look at our actual dates. Let's see. Let me just go back into this window again. Uh, let's see, when is it coming? April? It says still April 26th. I mean, today is, what's today? April 25th here. So is it coming tomorrow? Would it be tomorrow at the usual time, or will we somehow get it tonight? Ah, this is so confusing. I don't know anymore. Or is the time going to get shifted up again? But then again, my gut tells me that it's probably going to coincide with the event ending for the stam. And the stam we have... And we've got 24 hours left on it. So would it be tomorrow and then another 7 hours after the fact to get it? So 30, 31 hours from now? I'm so confused. And that's like, that's another thing. That's that's one of the things that could easily be fixed with a tweet or some sort of clarification. And I don't know, I'm going to check their Twitter real quick before, before I look like, you know, an ass clown in that regard. But I don't think... They have anything in that regards to do the official update. Like, let's see, their last last major tweet was about rank up quest for demon materials. Okay, that's great. That's that's nice, I guess. Play until May fifth. All right, and that's that's it. There's no clarification. Let's maybe check their Facebook. Let's see what's going on here. There's just like nothing. Let's see, maybe, maybe on Facebook? Let's find out. Dragon Quest Tech, please, yes, let's see. Any update here? No. Jack and shit. Okay, so yeah, like that that's something that I'd also like to, to see at some point. So, essentially, it's just like there's... When you don't even know when your own events... You know, when the player base doesn't even know when things are going to start, when updates are going to hit... I mean, even day one, back when, when a majority of us started this game, I got lucky in terms of getting in day one, you know, minute one, because I just checked every hour. 
I had no idea where the game was going to launch. I, no I feel like that happened to a lot of people. Some people even missed a full day because they didn't know when this game was going to launch. And that's that's been, you know, where where are we right now in terms of days? Because, you know, I'm playing this for a minute. What day are we on? And I mean, it's going to reset soon. But Okay, we're on day 88. We have the Steam, almost the same amount of communication. I mean, Malcolm's in there. He's community manager. He's a good buffer. He gives us some idea of things. We have almost the same amount of communication as we did when we started this game, eight, you know, 87 days ago. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, the main things you guys should be working on when the new boxes, well, when the new upgrades come out, you're going to be able to easily, if you do want CP, if you want to go crazy. You know, all these lower tier units are going to be pretty much easy to rank up and get an extra level out of them. That's not going to be a problem. Specific family ones, though, for the higher tiers, those are going to be locked potentially behind a month or two time gate barrier. Could it be less because we're global and things are different? Maybe. You know, who knows? I mean, the meta for even Arena is going to be drastically different, which is... I'm excited to see how that plays out because, you know, there's always those guys who I played the other version... I got all the information, I'm ready to go. And then they come into things and, you know, they dominate. They Because they've done it before. It's like, oh, well, there's no real surprise here. I've done this before. I just have to do X, Y, and Z again and then do X, Y, and Z here and, and you win. Congratulations. All you did was repeat things and you beat up a bunch of novice players. G g bravo. Good, good for you. Here it's a little bit different because the timeline has changed. Things are not going to line up perfectly. Which is great, you know. It's like one of one of my main complaints in this game was lack of surprises. Well, Dread Dragon was a surprise, loved it. The arena coming out without the beta, everything, and you know, even the roadmap so soon, surprises. Love them, you know, in terms of that regard. So they're doing good on that front. But I look forward to the content. Look forward to seeing what we, you know, if we can flesh out with this game. Doing some arena videos, other things of that nature. For the newer players who are just coming into this now, you guys are going to have, you know, months of content to work on. Because even even with how I've been, you know, just gradually beating away at the game, I am still not even... i still got stuff to do. I've still got Awakenings to work on. I've got a few units left to, to iron out and destroy and, and crush in terms of Awakenings. And, you know, there's always going to be new banners and fights and things of that nature. So, there's... There's always going to be stuff to do, so I like the fact that we're getting a steady stream of content, and yeah. Well, aside from that, folks, I mean, we just got we just got to keep a, keep up the uh, the good faith with the game. Hopefully, they clean up the monetization a bit. They they can pull some more numbers because I mean, you know, nobody wants this game to fail, but at the same time, our ability to keep this game afloat is limited. I mean, we. Essentially, we have to keep trying to make some videos, trying to keep getting people to, to want to try this game out, play it, see what it's about. I mean, even today, I just made, like, a little joke team. Well, I, I used, like, a max power team. And I was like, you know what, let me see if I can take that team and bully, and bully, you know, Killing Machine. And sure enough, uh, I was able to, to bully Killing Machine with this setup, which is kind of funny. So go ahead and do that real quick. I still need to do Peacock, I know. Uh, believe me, I know. But it's just, oh, it's just one of those things where we just need to keep the community going. We need to keep pushing forward because nobody wants to end up in the gotcha graveyard, which, well, it's a sad place to end up. But it's just crazy what like you can do in terms of power with this game at some point. Like this fight, I originally beat it with a budget team that Sato and, and even Platt came up with, and now it's like, well, I can just go in here and. Uh, Wreck? Wreck motherfuckers. Or I could get wrecked right now, too. Either, either work it out. You, you never know. It's all all in good fun. All in good fun. Let's see. Close. Keep him here. Let's go ahead and buff them. This fight gets ridiculous. Like gets... it's okay. He hits him. Great. 
Hits my guy. Okay. Big whoop. Let's go ahead and just smack him. Still need to level up some of these guys' abilities, but it's just funny. You can come in here with these jo <laughs> this joke set up and just oh, here we go. Now he's pissed. Oh, now we're pissed in his Kool Aid. Uh, here we go. But it doesn't matter. I mean, just look at the raw power of these guys. Ridiculous. Heal. Well, actually, should be able to. Eh, we'll just get him to be safe. Let's get him top back up again. Oh, probably could have killed him that turn too. Oh, yeah, I could have taken that turn four. But now we'll heal up. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Even with just his low plus side cannon and one more hit, boom. It's just crazy. Like. You... Now, I still can't auto this fight, so it's not not completely brain dead yet for these type of battles. But it's just you can put some real you can put some real time into this game and throw throw in some you know a lot of dedication and grinding and take some of these older fights and just beat them the fuck up. Or you can also take a ragtag team of of scrummy units and just still win it with way under the, the guideline recommended CP. So that's, I don't know, that's why I like this game. There's, there's a lot of value, there's a lot of units that, you know, people will say don't get, don't do things with, there's tier list here, tier list there, which to be honest, I don't really give two fucks about tier list. Because everything has value on its own, right? I mean, nobody ever saw Queen Slime being used in Pyramid to, to get an easy clear, and if you had Queen Slime, you saved yourself a lot of time, energy, and, and effort to get that clear, to get that icon to get done. So, yeah, so potentially, well, hopefully everything's keep going well with this game. We get more updates, we get we get more more content, the roadmap looks good. I mean, blazing over the roadmap, I'm still very excited about a couple of things here that, I mean, I haven't peeked too much into the, the future of things, and I know it's going to be super hard to see on here because it's like, oh, I'm looking at it on my phone, which makes it even worse, but... More more battle roads are always going to be be good. That that is something that a lot of people are, are going to be able to just work on right off the bat. We're going to get you know we're going to get levels level eight and potentially I don't know if we're going to get them broken down into two portions for you know half the families are going to get their battle road eight now the next are going to get them two months from now or how it's going to play out. But keep your eyes open, folks. You may also sneak some other stuff in here, too. Some stuff that they didn't say about. So everybody keep their eyes open. If you do notice anything when the update drops, that's something they didn't put in there in terms of the notes, you know, let us know. Let's take a look at it, see what other goodies they got. Or if you're expecting them to do something crazy like Ad Pissarro, let me know. But otherwise, thank you guys for watching. I look forward to the update coming soon. We're getting close. We still got a day left to grind out the stand vent, so get as many units done as you can. If you don't have Musifer to at least two or three, get Musifer to two or three. Like just just do it. He's a really good unit if you don't have any sort of budget per se. If you can't, you know, if you can't be a spender, if you you know if you don't really have a great team, this guy's a good unit. You know, get this guy. There's other other B rank units that you should be working on too that you can have some real value out of if you you know you're you're into this game. Tuscatier not so much. Wackalite probably wouldn't touch him. 
if you can, because can, there's going to be an event for him soon. But, I mean, you can get Belrith up. Belrith isn't bad. There's just a lot of a lot of decent units here. Sabercat, the B-Rank Sabercat's a really good unit, too. So, yeah, so just keep your eyes on that, folks, and we'll talk to you next time. Take care.